Hey, Coach, you got us okay? Gotcha. All right, I'm going to start recording, and then, BJ, you can kick it off. Recording in progress. One, uh, Tim, once you went back and looked at the film, what were your major, major takeaways uh, from that one? I mean, there's uh, there's some things to be really proud of and some things to really build on. I think if you watch that uh, – <laughs> That first half and, and see us get into our rhythm and get into our tempo and distribute the ball to a lot of people. I mean, that's really what we want to do. That's what, what we want our identity to be. Um, and there were some times there where we were doing it at a pretty high level. I know the guys were having a lot of fun. Um, and so I thought some things we can really build on there. And then there's some things you can really grow and learn from. And, and you know, you look at that third quarter, which a lot of people are going to focus on. And there's just so many things that go into us struggling there. Um, and everyone's got a little, little hand in it. And so, but great opportunity to learn from that, grow from it. And, and you know, first time doing the offense in a real game together, um, expecting some good and some bad. So some things we can learn from for sure. I know uh, George, you know, being out is a big part of it, but uh, you know, the, the running game struggled again. And that was kind of a storyline last year, you know, before you got here was the running game struggling. How, what would you make of the running game and for your offense to work the way you want it to, how badly do you need to get the running game going? You know, anytime you want to win football games as a team, you're going to need to be able to run the football and stop the run. I think the thing that is hard maybe for people outside to understand is that, you know, there's a lot of things that go into our run game right now. And, you know, almost every run play we have has, is going to have some type of pass option with it. And so sometimes we complete a pass and you guys are like, oh, that's another good pass play. When really it was a run play that turned out to be pass yards. So it may go in the pass yard column, you know, at the end of the game. But really that was part of our run game too. So um, we got to do a good job of, of, as a staff, of coming up with a good plan that can fit the guys that we have. Obviously, we lost Stets in the middle of the game, and I thought early on in the game we were having some success running the ball and then um, lost Stets, and their interior of the D-line kind of got after us a little bit. And we got to do a better job as a staff adjusting and getting ourselves in, in better run schemes. Um, and then also just, again, knowing the, our style of offense and how it works is we got to do a better job on first down, whether it's run or pass, so that we can get into our – our tempo and, and then wear teams out, you know, by moving the football to a lot of different people. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, thanks, BJ. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Hey, Jay. Um, in your offense, how much do you ask of your offensive linemen? Because uh, they certainly seem to pull and stuff a lot more than maybe, you know, the, the previous offense that was ran here. And you brought up Jake Stetz. But how much did that that hurt losing Jake? Because once again, it caused you guys to shuffle the deck for a, a second or third time in that game already up front. Yeah, continuity up front is such an important part of what you do. And we got a, we got a bunch of good players up front. But, uh, you know, we had Kakani out of the game with some various things that, that are bothering him. And then, you know, Garrett Kearns struggling through some things. And then you lose Stets. Um, you know, you got guys like Ben Dooley and Will that are making really their first start. So you just got a lot of moving parts going on up front. Plus, you're going against a D line that I think is pretty dang good. Um, so you put all those together, and you're right. We're going to ask those guys to do a lot of different things in a run game. We're not going to just run your basic schemes, but we had to get pretty simple there in the third quarter with with what was going on. And I, and I know that uh, you know some of those runs on our inside zone stuff that again didn't work out in the third quarter the way we wanted to and. Again, there were some pass compliments to that that were being called on those plays that we could have thrown the ball, could have ran the ball. Those are the same plays that we call early in the game where it ends up being successful, and then you know they adjust and make some good plays on it. So anytime we shuffle the deck, you're going to have some issues. And, uh, but again, that that's every team. Like I said, there's no excuse for that. Us as a staff, we got to come up with a good plan that works with the guys that are in. Um, and we didn't do that early on in the third quarter, and that that hurt us for sure. Tim, when we look at your offense, our sample size is still so small right now. It, you know, not, not a ton of, like, vertical throws. Um, on that note, some, some of your wide receivers were outstanding blocking down the field on, on some of these catches, whether it be, you know, CT on uh, Khalil's first touchdown or Billy and Davis on, on his second touchdown. How, how important is that in your offense? Yeah, I think there's two types of effort in football. There's uh, your initial effort, which is kind of your responsibility. And then there's your recovery effort that you add in after the play. Uh, and there were some great clips of guys with just relentless finish on some of those plays and led to us having a lot of explosive plays. Um, you know, we were upwards of 12% of our snaps were explosive plays, which is really good. Um, 
it's just the negative plays that we had. We had too many negative plays that got us. And um, we, you know, I'm definitely not a conservative guy. And I know that that's something I'm going to be painted with after the third quarter. And, and trust me, if I walk down the street right now, that's what people are going to yell at me. But that's not that's definitely not who I am. You know, I'm an aggressive play caller. And trust me, we're going to take plenty of shots down the field. Um, but every game is going to be unique. You know, we got to do what we need to do to win that game. And the issue with that game, as we all know, was you could probably answer for me, is the defensive line. They got a great D line. They got the crowd noise. They got so just dropping back and chucking the ball deep down the field as much as everybody wants to do that. And there's a lot of offensive coordinators in Boise, I've learned, um, that want to do that. But you know, some games that's not the way we're going to move it. Sometimes you got to get the ball out of your hand, and, and we did a good job of that early. Should have done more of that in the second half, and that's the thing I I, I really regret. You know, we should have done more of that in the second half. Man, tell, tell neighbor Bob to take it easy on you then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Jay. Hey, Tim. How's it going today? Hey, what's up, Ron? So uh, as you look early in, in the game, um, Van Buren and Habibi Adik, you know, both of them were really explosive, you know, hit some nice runs. Second half, those were gone. You know, w was there an adjustment by the defense? Was that play calling? Was, was that an effort thing? What, what changed in the second half? No, I think we called very pretty much the same plays uh, from a run standpoint. And that's what, that's why we stuck with those plays, to be quite honest, is we were having some success. You know, I know we had the, the play with Van Buren on the pin and pull down there in the first quarter. Um, that was like big run. Then we had some inside zones. The second play of the game, big run. I think it was the 11th play of the game for – Cyrus, another big run on inside zone on a second and long. So we're having some success doing that. So, yeah, we're going to keep doing it. I think, to be honest, there we lost Jake Stetz and, uh, and their interior D line was really talented and they got really hot and they got some momentum going and they were getting off the ball with the crowd noise. And that's where we should have made a better adjustment as a staff and just said, you know what, let's get back to getting the ball out of our hand and, and trying to get our tempo going so we can get this thing started. And, and those are the mistakes we made for sure. Again, I think. People will point to, hey, don't run the ball. Just throw it every play. Um, but I think it's more about just either way, no matter what we choose to do, we just got to be better on first down so that we can get into a rhythm and get our tempo started. And that's that's a key to, the, to our offense, really. Looking ahead to this week, what stands out about uh, UTEP's defense? Man, those guys play really hard. They got an aggressive style of defense. They're obviously playing with a lot of confidence right now. And um, they got some good players at all three levels of the defense. So they're going to pose a, a really good challenge. And, and we're looking forward to it. Thanks, man. Good luck. Thanks, Ron. Let's go, uh, Bob, and then Will. Or, Will, you can go ahead and go. Hey, Tim, having gone so long in between coaching actual games, what was it like for you being able to actually coach in a game? Man, that was awesome. That was the coolest thing ever. It was hard not to get emotional when, like, the national anthem was playing and when the rain delay was going on, I was like, man, can we get a game going right now? Like if this game gets delayed, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, so I, yeah, it was really cool. Very emotional just to be able to be out there and be a part of that. And uh, uh, to be, you know, a Boise state Bronco and represent what is a very important brand and just feeling very fortunate. Uh, obviously wish we would have came out with a W, but like I said, I think there were some good things there we can build on, but that was, Definitely fun to be back on the football field. I know Andy said post game that Khalil was on a, a snap count for you guys, but in the plays that he did play, what did you think of his performance? Man, he's unbelievable, isn't he? I mean, just like, holy smokes. Uh, I think he played 20 snaps, and I think he touched the ball eight of the 20 snaps. And if you count the run, I think he had over 100 yards. I mean, and two touchdowns. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's tremendous. And – like, you know, the fact that we could use him was great. And, yeah, not having him on a full schedule, not having George, not having Kakani. I mean, Garrett's bang. I mean, you can you can we can list all these things and it can become excuses. But everyone's bang, everyone's banged up. We got to find a way to get more guys going. And early on, we got a lot of guys the ball. And that was really good to see that we have other guys that can do it. But I mean, when that guy's healthy and playing a lot, obviously, he's going to get the ball a lot. And when he does, that's the best thing for us. That guy's a heck of a player. The hype is real. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Will. Paul, Jay, do you have a question? Coach, uh, what's the uh, attitude of, of your offensive players? And is there anyone else that you can kind of share the uh, Shaq-type plays with? Is there anybody else on the team 
that can do them, maybe not as well, but do them? The attitude of our offense, I mean, I think it, I think it starts with us. Uh, you know, we're, we're an attack-minded team. We're an attack-minded offense. We're a, a group that, you know, seeks joy every day and what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, I think we have fun out there and execute at a high level. We want to be precise um, in understanding situational football, um, finishing in the red zone, which we did a good job of in the last game. So I think that's the attitude of the offense. And then, uh, you know, every player is unique. Is there another Shaq? No. I mean, there's he's a one-of-a-kind player. But, you know, we do have talented guys that can do those things. I think CT can do those things. Um, I think Steph Cobbs can do those things. Um, and, I, and I think we got another list of guys in the running back. I think George can do those things. And, you know, I think we got plenty of guys that can do those things. But can anyone do it like Shaq? No. But then that's what makes everybody unique. You know, maybe CT can't do it like Shaq, but no one can do it like CT either. Everyone's going to be unique to their to their strengths. Um, so, uh, but to answer your question, I would say no one can do it like Shaq, but we have people that can do those plays and be successful with it. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Paul. Ron, Jay, BJ for follow-ups. Oh, sorry, you said Ron. Sorry, sorry. Coach, uh, you kind of touched on this a second ago, but but going back to the second half in that game, you know, early on in that game when you guys were rolling the offense, you guys were hitting some throws, you guys had some success through the air. You went away from that in the third quarter. You know, I get it, hindsight 2020, but do you kind of regret that decision at this point? Yeah, absolutely. I think anytime, you know, you guys are going to get to know me and I'm going to get to know you guys as we keep going through the season. And, and obviously as an offensive coordinator, it's always going to be the play calling that's going to be brought up and, and we can have these conversations every week and I'm all for it. Um, but yeah, there's always going to be plays you regret when you call. And some of them, you guys don't even think we regret them. Like there's plays in the first half that you guys don't even realize. I'm like, man, that was not a good call either. But um, I think the things in the second half to point to are, and you know, we can go drive through drive if you want with the photographic memory, but it's like, Hey, end of first half fumbled the snap first play. So that drive in trouble first half, the uh, first drive of the second half fumbled the snap first play. So again, that drive in trouble. Okay. The next drive we're calling an RPO on the first play. So he could pass it or run it and it ends up being a run and everyone's like, man, why are we running the ball? But that could be a pass, you know, if, if you get the certain look that you want. And then we end up throwing the ball uh, on third down and it's incomplete. And the next drive we, do a run play. It's an RPO. Again, he ends up handing it off. He could have thrown it. I mean, that's how it looks. Next two plays are pass, pass. So, I mean, I think everyone says, uh, hey, why'd you run the ball so much? But the truth is, like, those are the same plays you're calling early in the game. But in this style of offense, it's an RPO. So it could be a run or it could be a pass. And uh, and I think the thing that we should have done a better job of as a staff is what you were talking about, Ron, of just saying, hey, Let's just drop back and take these quick throws that we're getting and, and get ourselves off to a good start here on first down. And maybe the RPO game is something we can wait for later on in the drive. Um, but, but yeah, I think the regret I have is, is in the third quarter, just looking at it from where the game was, we could have taken those, those throws probably. And our guys were having success on the perimeter and we probably could have dropped back and thrown a couple more of those. Thanks coach. Yep. Um, Tim, how do you sit down and analyze the game with Hank? And I know that you, you have a uh, kind of a mantra, a finder of joy. So how, how do you find the good and improve upon maybe some of the things that, that you might want to see him do better? And then on top of that, um, how much did, did Hank, you know, demonstrate probably his, his best attribute in that game is toughness? Yeah, no, I think uh, great question. And you know, this is one I can go into length of, but, you know, I shouldn't say you guys, but the media and, and the fans, you know, they're going to judge every coach and every player by wins and losses as they should. Right. I mean, that's how this works. That's the, that's kind of the life we've chosen and I'm all good with that. And because of that, we can't judge ourselves on wins and losses because you guys are already going to do it. Right. So what we got to judge ourselves on is the process and how we're working towards being the best we can be. Uh, and that's tough when you're a guy like Hank, and everyone's going to focus on one poor decision at the end of the game that he's got to live with. And I'm sure if he, I hope he turns off his social media, but if he didn't, I'm sure there's not nice comments coming his way from a lot of people that a lot of quarterbacks in Boise too, a lot of quarterbacks and a lot of offense coordinators. Right. But I thought he showed some tremendous toughness throughout the game. I thought he showed some great accuracy throughout the game. You watched him early in that game. 
what was his first nine completions to nine different receivers. He didn't take one sack that game. I mean, I don't know in his career how many games he's played, but he's taken a lot of sacks. He got the ball out of his hand. He took some big hits and hung in there. Um, and he was driving us right down the field. There was no doubt in our mind we were going to drive right down there and score. Uh, and, you know, he he wants to win really bad and, and made a poor decision there at the end. And he's got to live with that. But, again, I think just like our staff, our entire offense, a lot of positives that we can build on and still a lot of things we can get better at. Uh, that should be exciting for us is to say, hey, we're not going to judge ourselves by the results. That's for everybody else to do. We're going to focus on the process. And you can find joy in a bad play the same way you can find it in a good play if you look at it the right way, which is I can learn from this. If I learn from this and I don't make that mistake again, I'm going to be a better player for it. I'm thankful for that moment because it's going to make me better. Thanks, Tim, uh, Thanks, at center, at center um, we saw Dante was atop the depth chart, but I don't know if that was just because of the – you know, Kay Connie being injured or what? And, and I don't know if you can say if you guys are expecting to have Kay Connie back. I mean, you mentioned some of the snap issues. Um, and and uh, also, I guess, just in general, offensively, do you expect to be healthier against UTEP? Uh, that's that's a tough question, BJ. I mean, I, I don't know yet, probably because it's early in the week. I hope so, right? Usually a week later, guys have more time to get healthier. So I'm hoping we get some guys back. Uh, yeah, with Kakani not being available, obviously Dante has to step up and be the guy. And, and we were hoping maybe Kakani could go a little bit. And as we got closer to the game, we realized he couldn't. Um, and Dante was thrown into a real tough situation. I thought he actually handled himself really well. Excuse me. Um, I mean, you got the crowd noise. You got the pass rush with the interior talent that they have. You know, the whole game. I mean, you try, BJ. You try sticking your head between your legs and and waiting for the snap because it's so loud. And then you got to look up and snap it. And you got these guys coming at you. So it's not easy. Uh, and that's the first game to get thrown into that atmosphere. So I thought he actually handled himself well. And we did have the snap issues. We had one that was a bad snap and one that Hank dropped. Uh, I think that comes from the home field advantage of the crowd noise. And we, we should have handled that a lot better. But I think Dante is a heck of a heck of a player, works really hard. He's a big part of our culture and what we do. And um, he hung in there and, and fought his butt off. And Hopefully we have Kakani back, not because that replaces Dante, but Kakani is a great player and we need more help right now to have more depth up front. You don't want me trying that coach. There's a reason I'm a sports writer. And <laughs> it's hard. Players. You can ask coach Keen. We beat Stanford and, uh, and the only two plays they ever show are, are the fumble that he had and the sack that he gave up. So that's how it works. Impressive old lineman. Yep. All right. Thank you so much, coach. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a good week. Thanks, yep. Sam. We'll see Thanks, you. Coach.